Good afternoon and welcome to the TED talk of this session, Numerical Analysis. And the next speaker is Professor Tao Tang from Southern University of Science and Technology, China. And he's going to talk about on effective numerical methods for phase two methods. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the scientific committee for giving me the opportunity to speak here. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, effective numerical methods for phase field models. So this is the program I have been running for the past 15 years. So um, I'm from Southern University of uh, Science and Technology uh, in Shenzhen, China. Uh, my talk will be uh, consisting of uh, five parts. So I will, the beginning, I will give you a brief introduction to phase field models. Then I will talk about the numerical methods for uh, the phase field equations. Then uh, I will cover fractional uh, phase field models. So this is a this is a long local uh, uh, model. Uh, Professor Chandu talked about this uh, already um, with some uh, basic concepts. And I will also talk about uncertainty quantification for phase field models. Uh, Professor Shi Jing also covered part of this uh, background. So uh, I'll first give you some idea about uh, phase field models. So this uh, is phase field model. Basically, is an approximation to uh, describe the sharp interface. So for a lot of uh, problems, uh, you have initially you have uh, random data and uh, with the phase field models, after some time, uh, we have the cosining uh, procedure. So uh, in the almost a steady state, you can see we have uh, you know, very sharp interface and with some uh, 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 very clear uh, pictures of the separations. So this is a very simple and a popular model. And, uh, and has, this model has been of uh, long history and with a lot of uh, intensive uh, research literature for these kind of problems. So the first field models uh, uh, for the beginning basically is used to, to describe moving boundary problems. So you have a moving boundary, you have a, a first value of uh, one and a minus one, positive one, and then you have a very thin layer of the, uh, for the uh, 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 first uh, length, so it's uh, epsilon. With the so if we describe the dynamics of this uh, uh, phase function, so we see uh, we have, uh, we normally can do this, uh, derive this function or the equation from a free energy. So this is the energy, uh, I'll discuss this a little bit later, you know, with more uh, 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 detailed descriptions. So with a long conservative order of parameters, we end up with uh, a long linear uh, diffuse, diffusion equation is called the allen kahn equation, which is a second order long linear equation. Then more uh, commonly, we have the uh, conserved order parameter. So this end up with a conhelial equation. This is, involves a biharmonic, uh, 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 biharmonic uh, uh, parameter. And also with, uh, for both cases, for the allen kahn equation, this is the second order uh, long linear diffusion equation. And the conhelial equation, which is a very common uh, 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 equation to describe the phase field models. And the relevant ones, we also have what we call the MB model, so molecular beam epitaxy. So this case, very similar to the conhelial equation. However, for the long linear source term, it's not only relevant to the function value, but also relevant to the gradient of the unknown solution. So f of phi, little f, is uh, normally we have uh, this typical uh, description, which is, uh, is called the double wheel uh, 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 potential. So uh, gradient flow, this, so these three equations basically all can be described in the term of gradient flow. So this is an important feature of these uh, three equations. So if, for example, if we have a MB equation, so we have this, uh, we call the, uh, the, the, the uh, energy functional, and then the conhelial, the, the bottom one, this is conhelial, but also for Alan Kahn, they also share the same energy uh, functional. So in my talk, you'll see from time to time, I will discuss a very important uh, 
property called the, the we, we call the energy dissipation law. So this is that means uh, very common for all of our physical field problems is because this is a gradient flow. The energy functionals of a physical field problems are always decay with the time. So with the time increase and the energy will decrease. And very interestingly, you'll see for the Alan Khan, you normally you'll see a one some kind of a jump, you know, from one state to another state of the energy. And uh, you know, if you talk, think about a viscous conservation laws, this is like a, like a Riemann problem. You know, you have one state, another state, and then you have a, a, you know some kind of interface. Considered, you may have a couple of uh, 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 critical time that you can see the energy profile will be changing from one uh, state to another state. So the, this is a different time regime. So, you know, you see the change even for the uh, MB. So the thin film epitaxy, you will see a little bit a uh, uh, big change, then another change, and then the further change. So the energy. So first of all, energy will be decreasing. And uh, later you'll see for the numerical scientific computing, we talk about the numerical schemes. So energy decreasing, very similar to like conservation laws, we talk about the total variation uh, decreasing or, uh, or, or energy uh, uh, de decreasing. So this is very similar. So this will be a guiding principle for later, you know, for all of my uh, several topics relevant to my numerical schemes. So this energy law is the key for designing numerical schemes. Also, for our uh, analysis, we'll use the similar things. So, so to conclude the first part, I will uh, mention uh, numerical challenges. So first, difficulties, we want, how can we catch dynamics and steady state effectively? So that means for some part, we might use a small uh, time step, but the summer part, in particular, if you look at the energy profile, energy could change, you know, uh, to a, uh, to a smaller values, and then you have a steady state. So, in this case, we want to have a, a larger delta t, and in this case, certainly, we want when we talk about catching dynamics, we want to have a smaller delta t time step, right? So, the, so this is the first thing. Secondly, how can we use high order methods? So high order later, you'll see, we also wanted to make sure the energy, you know, uh, de decreasing. So this kind of a property can be satisfied almost everywhere. Okay. And thirdly, how can we use adaptive methods? So in space and time for long time integration. So this uh, also we have. Um, I, I uh, used to work with the professor uh, Ping Wen Zhang on this topic. You know, we have adaptive methods to in particular for, uh, for uh, space adaptivity. Okay, so a uh, different approach. There are energy decay methods, uh, numerous efforts. If you look at uh, Cyanum, CISIC, uh, or JCP, in the past uh, 10 or 15 years, you see many papers on these designing numerical methods, in particular for the high order methods. So adaptive in time and space, uh, it's uh, also uh, quite uh, some works, moving mesh spectral method, Actually, developed by Professor Chang Du uh, in, uh, in his group. So let, let me to move to uh, the, the the second part. So I in this part, uh, after the giving you the brief introduction of the phase field models, I want to talk about some existing numerical methods for phase field equations. So to uh, start, I I I will start with a very simple uh, equation. So this is will be very familiar. We have. Uh, Ut equal to uxx, x, this is a standard heat equation. Then we have a double wheel potential uh, uh, derivative, so this is relevant to a very small, uh, uh, some kind of a nonlinearity, polynomial uh, nonlinearity. So for this equation, if you multiply Ut on both sides and do some integration by forwards, you'll, you'll see this is a standard uh, 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 you know, dissipation law for uh, Alan Kahn equation. For, for Positive time, you'll see the your your, uh, your energy will be decreasing. It's the time. So this is a uh, uh, very simple. Okay, numerically, you'll see. Firstly, this is a uh, uh, standard. You know, you can see if I use uh, uh, this uh, little modified uh, crank nickerson scheme, then you can prove in a rigorous way that uh, the energy. So if I have the discretized version of the energy, you'll see the energy will be. Uh, decreasing with the time. So this is a, 
uh, uh, looks very perfect. However, numerically, we don't want to see this because we have a cubic nonlinearity in the right-hand side. So we have to use some kind of iterations in a fixed point, whatever. So nonlinear solvers for doing this. So certainly, this is not a good thing. So of course, I just want to, I just want to mention that I will, later I want to work on for a uh, conhelial equation or you know, general system. But this will give you uh, some ideas. You'll see. Uh, you can see, I want to get rid of the nonlinear source term on the right hand side. So this will be uh, uh, straightforward. You see, you see I, instead of, uh, you know, this is semi implicit. So this case, I just use, uh, uh, we call the linear scheme. So this is, uh, this is the linear term, and this coefficient is a given, uh, is a given uh, function. So, you know, easily you can solve this. Then we can have L infinity stability, L1, L2. However, it's, uh, uh, we, we don't have this uh, energy decay. So energy decay, even for this uh, simple case, we'll not be able to do this. OK, so if you, do, if you work a little bit further, you'll see if I, instead of uh, this UJ n plus 1 term, so if I do a little average, you know, like uh, n plus 1 n level average, you see we can prove the energy energy uh, decay. So energy dissipation law is there if we do a little tricks here. OK, so for Allen Kahn equation, you'll see we have a different, uh, you have a standard correctness recursion is a beautiful result, but uh, not uh, useful in practice. So then we can do a little average, then we get uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, this uh, energy uh, uh, decay. So this is called the dissipation law. So this is uh, standard. However, extension to conhelial equation is non-trivial. It's, 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 it's sometimes it's, it's not a straight, it's not, it's always difficult for conhelial equation because uh, if I have the Allen Kahn, I have the maximum principle. But for conhelial equation, the maximum principle is gone. So this analysis is uh, it's not, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, most of the cases is not possible. OK, numerical methods for the conhelial equation. So we started, you know, if I look at the literature, you know, the earliest paper I can see is Chengdu, and uh, I think it's back to 20-some uh, years, 30-some years ago, 20-some years ago. So this is, uh, again, this is a crank nickerson scheme. As I mentioned, that you have a very good new theoretical result, but it's not very, uh, it's not useful. Uh, there's a, a, a paper, it's a, a conference, a preceding paper. It's not exactly like published in journal, but it's a very, uh, this paper, IELTS uh, convex splitting paper has a, has a long impact in the past 20 years. You'll see maybe I would say easily see 200 or 300 papers resulting from this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this paper. Uh, convex splitting, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. So this is a first order unconditionally stable linear. So linear means uh, I can have, uh, at most I have a linear matrix, and I can solve this, uh, uh, you know, for example, in the one dimension is just a tri-diagonal matrix, I can solve that easily. Uh, so, but anyway, so this is a, a very successful scheme. Then uh, Jie Shen, Lohan or Steve Weiss, has a lot of papers to do uh, extensions, the second order, explicit, uh, you know, this kind of a complex splitting based on the IELTS splitting method. And uh, I also, with uh, a couple of my collaborators, we did also the spectral methods together with the complex splitting. For discretization, you'll see the recent paper of like uh, Tom Hughes and uh, Chi Wang Shu Du and, uh, uh, and uh, Zhong Hua Chao and also in the audience. So you'll see the various methods for, for this kind of uh, uh, conhelial equation. Because conhelial equation is much difficult. Uh, if you want only for, uh, uh, if you talk about uh, not first order, if second order, unconditional stable, linear, if you have these keywords, you'll see we need a lot of efforts to do this. Ho and also, if you for the full discretization, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, things. I'll describe a couple of methods I think will be uh, a very useful uh, uh, way to do the computation. So let me start with give you a little idea about what is the convex splitting. Uh, considering this uh, conhelial equation, 
Uh, I can write, I'll basically write this in the grid in the flu uh, format with this is energy uh, uh, functional. So, uh, so he proposed to have the convex city uh, uh, splitting. So basically, he write this uh, a functional with the two convex functions, both uh, in C2 and are strictly convex. And he proposed this. See, uh, uh, we, for this part, most of the cases is linear. So this part, they use this, uh, we'll uh, touch this uh, uh, on n plus one level. And this is a long linear, and this is uh, uh, basically is n level. So, so this you are easy to see, because it's, if this is a linear, this is easy to see, this is a linear scheme. Okay, easily you'll see this is the first order only. Okay, so the easy, he also proved that if you do this splitting, you can prove this, this is unconditionally stable, I mentioned earlier, and that's a semi-implicit, semi there's a linear, and also this is the first order. Now just to give you a simple example, if I, if I just add this term, so it's uh, some kind of a beta term, and uh, then easily you can verify if a beta is uh, sufficiently large, it's, it's large enough, so you'll see this is, uh, EC is a convex function, and this EE is also a convex function. Then you can just easily derive this red, red line is the, our numerical scheme. You'll see this numerical scheme is uh, n plus one, this is linear, and uh, uh, remember F is a polynomial, so this is a uh, long linear terms. Okay, we can also prove that if beta is a sufficiently large, in the sense, normally, if you have uh, u, you know, because u normally is a plus or minus one. So if u, initial u is uh, bounded by one, so you can, normally, we can show that beta is, uh, if beta is greater than or equal to two, this is a scheme which satisfy this uh, energy uh, decay property. So this is, uh, the, uh, this is uh, uh, important property for the numerical scheme. Okay, now I, I would like to uh, uh, describe a method. I, I think it's very uh, interesting and very useful. Based on the various methods, so I want to see, uh, we can also have the P adaptivity. So this is like, uh, uh, I have increased, you know, the order. You know, if you have finite element method, you'll see you have P adaptivity, you have H adaptivity. So this, uh, this is a method I would like to describe, uh, I feel uh, very useful. So first, I want to make sure for each step, my this one, so my energy uh, difference is small. So if if normally if delta t is not big, so this should be small. If not small, means you we may have a, a not converted results. So this could be big. So so if the difference is large, then use a high order scheme. So how can we do this? So we proposed this. Uh, this is. Uh, my postdoc earlier uh, visitor, and this uh, Jiang Yang is, was uh, uh, my former PhD student. Also now is a faculty member in my university. So, uh, so with a spectral deferred correction method. So this is the idea like uh, basically for, uh, for uh, differential equation, we, we do this like when the time, you know, we, we use a Picard iteration. So together, you know, we use some points in each time interval, a couple of points, two or three points with Gaussian type quadrature points. So we do iteration in the sense, if the method is only first order, if I find the accuracy is not good, accuracy is not good means this is large, then I do one iteration. And we can prove that after one iteration, there is at least one order increase with iteration. So sometimes for, for some interval, I may have to use second order scheme. Sometimes I have to use a third order, sometimes a fourth order. But you remember earlier I said the energy profile only changed suddenly in very few places. So this, is this kind of uh, iteration, you can only use uh, in a very few places, like uh, 95, more than 95 places, you can use only first order. And then, uh, less than 5% of the time regime, we can use the iteration to increase the order of accuracy. Just to give you one example, so you can see the flavor of this. I use a very fine mesh to calculate this, uh, we call the benchmark solution. 
I, 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 this is a typo. This should be 1 over 1,000. So 30T is 1 over 1,000. I get this uh, solution. So if I use 1 over 25, it's quite a big time step. Uh, we use the same first order uh, splitting method. You'll see they are totally different. However, if I use adaptive P enhancement, that means if I find that the, it's not accurate by comparing the energy profile uh, uh, information, if not good, I do a couple of iterations, then finally you see this is again the 1 over 25, 30T. After uh, some iterations, you'll see I can get it almost the same as the benchmark solution. Then you can see this, like uh, the, this is a solid line. Solid line basically is a 1 over 1,000, 30T, without using iteration. 30T is a 1 over, uh, this is a 1 over 25 without STC. So you can see, without using STC, you get a blue line. And if you got the STC, you, you know, you, you can get almost the same as the benchmark solution. So the, if you look at the CPU time, it's a huge saving. You know, 1 over 25. You can easily solve this problem until you equal 100, 200, even 1,000. So this, uh, so P adaptivity. Then you use a, a first order very stable method, and then with some kind of adaptive uh, 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 with the time, you can see the solution could be good. So how can we understand the 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 the, the you know we can get the solution right? So we have to do some analysis. So. Uh, so basically, you can see for a uh, calculated equation, for example, if I just do this, uh, you know, space, I use a Fourier analysis time, I use kind of a straightforward uh, semi-implicit scheme, then you'll easily see we, we have, we, with the increase of the mode, identity has to be very small, you know, this kind of things. So one possibility to do this is like uh, uh, Bertosi, you know, the her paper. Actually, she's talking next door to, uh, right now. So I think this, with this adding some kind of uh, artificial term, very similar to the beta term I talked about earlier, so which corresponds to this. So, if, so this certainly will not work. If you do this calculation, you end up with a very small T. You will not be able to solve this problem for a larger time. So adding some extra term, uh, this is very similar to uh, IO splitting because he added this beta term, you know, very similar. So you'll see this in practice, if A is greater than or equal to O1, some kind of, uh, you normally we do the A is greater than 2, then the energy stability holds. So I just want to mention that the more rigorous analysis given recently by uh, 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 Dong Li of Hong Kong UST and the Zhong Hua Chao uh, here in the audience and myself. So we basically uh, analyze this problem and then prove this, uh, that if A is relevant to uh, the uh, initial data and also to the uh, perturbation parameter, if A is reasonably large or sufficiently large, we can show that the energy decreasing, this energy de dissipation law is satisfied. And uh, furthermore, if we assume some kind of regularity for the initial data, then we can also prove that convergence. So that means the, your, the difference between your numerical solution and uh, the exact solution, we, we can show that this, this space, we have some kind of exponential decay uh, uh, of the spectral method and also in time, because this is the first order, we can have this kind of uh, convergence result. So this is, uh, uh, this, this is uh, uh, basically, you can see that uh, uh, for the, we have various methods for concrete allocation for, for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, phase field models. So uh, I would say we, we have, the, the lower order method is very good because most of the time you can use the most lower order method. For the, some specific places, if we use, uh, we use some kind of a stabilization, you know, for example, if we add some terms, <coughs> this is very similar to IO's uh, method. So we can also, theoretical guarantee that the energy stability can be satisfied. And also, with some uh, f a smoothness assumption for the initial data, we can have this uh, convergence result. Okay, now, um, let me to move to uh, uh, a little bit further for this phase field. So the fraction of phase field models. So this is uh, because uh, uh, earlier you see several talks about the non-local uh, uh, models. 
So phase field also serve a very good uh, problem for the non-local uh, models. And also, again, so the energy dissipation will be an uh, interesting uh, principle, a uh, guiding principle for designing numerical schemes also for analysis. So for example, let me do, we'll see this, you know, if I have this, uh, 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 you know, this, uh, this is like an elliptic problem. Uh, if I have this uh, uh, alpha over two, so alpha is from uh, zero to two, so this is uh, uh, it's not a local problem. It's a non-local problem, global problem, because you can see the, the, the definition of this, uh, 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 this, uh, this uh, Laplacian term is, uh, becomes global. Of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, without uh, moving to a uh, phase field, we also can do spectral methods because you can see this is we can do the Fourier analysis and we can work on this uh, 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 quadratic uh, 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 coefficients. Then we can work on these uh, spectral collocation methods in terms of the Hermit functions and the rational functions. So this we can, uh, with my student, uh, uh, Hui Fang Yuan and uh, uh, Tao Zhou of uh, Chinese Academy of Science, we also designed a uh, spectral method. But this is a, quite a different with the standard uh, the spectral trebuchet, spectral Legendre with some, some kind of modified or, ex, or, or, or generalized uh, uh, spectral function. OK. So, Fraction, fractional in space reaction diffusion. So this is just uh, mentioned, uh, um, I mentioned the Alan Kahn. So this is just, you know, extension of the Alan Kahn. You'll see, uh, I have this problem. So you'll see, uh, well, if I, we can do some calculations, then you can see this fractional uh, Laplace. Now you become some kind of, uh, this is, a, you can calculate the WJ. So you can become something like this. It's, this is like u prime prime in terms of uh, uh, i, i point. And then you can also write this in the conservative form. OK, uh, so this, again, for the Alan Kahn type, this, uh, we can also we have some beautiful theory. You can see if the initial data is uh, uh, bounded by 1, so this is a typical case, because for the uh, phase field, normally initial data is bounded by 1. Then we can prove this is a monotone scheme. So if you, people are doing this hyperbolic conservation analysis, this is a familiar terminology uh, introduced by Godolov, I think. It's a monotone scheme. So we provided that if this is like, we have this kind of CFR-like condition, you know, for, the, for this guy, then we can show that uh, the maximum principle there. So even, even we have this uh, global operator so you will still have the maximum principle numerically. We can, if the initial data is bounded by one, then the, uh, also this uh, uh, solution uh, can be also bounded by one. So this is uh, uh, for the Alan Kahn or the, uh, or the generalized Alan Kahn fractional space, Alan Kahn, so this is uh, a good thing. OK, fractional conhedion. So there are a, a few papers now working on this straightforward uh, paper is uh, uh, remember we, we have the energy uh, defined earlier. So if you just change this energy uh, with this uh, uh, gradient, previously is a gradient phi, but now the gradient alpha phi. So, so if you do this, so then you work on this uh, uh, space fraction, fractional CH uh, calculated equations. So you get, if you do a modified uh, problem, before, this is um, uh, this alpha equal to 1. Without alpha, it's uh, from z greater than 0, less than 1, you end up with something like this. So the good news with this functional in space, you can uh, uh, quite easily prove this. So this uh, energy, uh, uh, energy uh, law is there. So this uh, is uh, uh, one, 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 uh, one extension of the fractional calculated equation. Another one is uh, uh, work with the you know, there's, uh, there's uh, also a very recent paper. So, uh, so they basically use the, you know, consider this is, if we talk about the concreter equation, this is always, uh, we cannot avoid it. So this is the, uh, the, 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 the energy functional. We also talk about, we want the energy functional. Uh, this is the guiding uh, uh, principle is the energy uh, functional is de decreasing. 
So if, uh, if you consider this is a, a gradient flow in H to the minus alpha, so you, with some kind of derivations, you get something like this. So remember that these, uh, uh, these are two models. You, you have one alpha is inside, another one is alpha is outside. So having this model, you know, this entity profile is, uh, uh, you know, it's quite straightforward to show that entity profile. So this is, uh, so if we have, if we, see this uh, 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 fractional uh, uh, long locality is in space. Uh, we can see these two papers. They basically give you an idea. You end up with uh, very straightforward energy uh, uh, decay properties. Time fractional. So this, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have a couple of workshops so talking about time fractional. This is uh, uh, quite, seems quite uh, 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 more challenging and the time uh, the difficult one. Uh, for example, uh, we, uh, let me do consider a very simple uh, time fractional Alan Kahn. Even Alan Kahn, you know, you see, uh, right hand side is a standard Alan Kahn. So if I move this to the uh, long local, uh, long local uh, derivative with the time. So this is uh, 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 if, if, if this, without this, if a standard, we have everything. You know, even numerical methods, we have theoretical results. Uh, the, with this uh, uh, non-local non locality in, <coughs> in time, you'll see we end up with something uh, like this. However, so this is uh, uh, still uh, energy dissipation law is uh, unknown. So this is still... It looks very simple, even for Alan Kahn. If you look at my previous slides, I also talk about Alan Kahn, it's very simple. You know, we have a maximum principle, we have energy profile, we have a linear scheme, we can also keep the uh, energy decay, but if, uh, if we have the time fractional uh, for Alan Kahn, so this, uh, uh, this turns out to be uh, very difficult. So. Uh, so it's a long trivia to show the energy law for time fractional phase field model. You know, this, uh, unlike the space fractional cases, although we have different tries, but you'll see uh, uh, there's a recent work we can show that with some kind of, uh, 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 you know, just uh, observations and uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, calculations. In particular, we use this, uh, uh, this kind of a lemma to, to for this uh, time, time directional uh, integration. We can, this is a, a recent result. We can show that energy uh, at the terminal time, capital T, and the initial time, zero, this, so the, the, the energy at the final time can be bounded by the energy uh, the initial time. So this is, uh, uh, this is a work uh, for, uh, with uh, uh, Hai Jun Yu and uh, Tao Zhou, both in the Chinese Academy of Science, the professor in Ai Xiang Yuan's uh, uh, institute. So, however, so this is, uh, we, we can call this is uh, energy stable. So, for the time fractional Alan Kahn, we can prove this is, uh, we, have the, we have the energy stability in the sense that the final uh, uh, energy can be bounded by the initial energy. But uh, uh, we, we can also show that the extension to time fractional cohesion, even MB, um, uh, a molecular beam uh, uh, epitaxy model for all is correct. In the correct in the sense we have this uh, energy stability. However, uh, there is, this is not the energy dissipation. So if for any T greater than or equal to S, so if we want to have see this uh, uh, decreasing property, for this uh, uh, for time fractional Alan Kahn, so uh, so this is still an uh, open problem. It's, uh, it's uh, still uh, uh, not easy to do that. Numerically, uh, we can also make this uh, uh, you know calculation. We want to verify this uh, energy decay is correct or not. You know, we we design this. Uh, uh, stable scheme, uh, you can, you know, with the scheme, we can also prove that for this numerical scheme, uh, we have the scheme, we add a, a little as, as I, we did before, like, uh, uh, you know, we add some term, we make sure the A is appropriately chosen, so this is the old dirty T term, okay, then we can prove this is true, energy stability is true, and, uh, and uh, we, we also have this, uh, 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 
uh, uh, method for Cochlear equation, MB equation, so all, you know, we can prove this energy stability. Numerically, we can find that energy for time fractional Cochlear equation, time fractional MB equation, energy decay is always true. So that means N plus one level energy is less or equal to N level energy. However, as I uh, said, it's uh, very difficult to prove. Uh, another interesting observation is this. Uh, you know, we can, for different alpha, for alpha equal to 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, we can, uh, we can uh, this is energy, or, and this is the time, we can plot the, uh, the curve, the energy curve uh, in terms of the time. Then uh, we also can, we can do this kind of fitting. So you can see the, the, the fitting is, that means the energy, will be proportional when time is large. To the t to the uh, energy will be proportional to the t to the minus alpha over three. So this is called the power law. So numerically for this uh, time, uh, uh, for the time fractional, you know, this is the interesting thing is that one, or numerically we can observe, we can always have the energy decay. And also this, uh, uh, this power, energy, energy also satisfies the power law. Power law means your energy is proportional to t to the minus uh, three or uh, alpha over three. So this is, uh, you know, I will just bring a couple of uh, open problems. This is, seems true with numerous computations, but uh, uh, it's not, uh, we are not able to prove this. So you can see with the, with the uh, uh, time fractional, uh, then we can see this, uh, we, 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 we can see this, uh, uh, you have, uh, the, you know, the uh, kind of steady solutions will take a, a much longer time. So the final times to reach the steady solution, steady state, you know, for alpha equal to one, you need a, a thousand, uh, and then point five is a six thousand, and then uh, zero point three, you need much more, you know, uh, you, in order to, reach the steady, because for the phase field, normally you can, uh, you'll, re you'll reach a steady state anyway. So, but that uh, time uh, scale depends on your uh, models. So for, the, uh, for the fractional, uh, time fractional, you can see this, you take a much longer time to, with 0 0.3 alpha, you get uh, to obtain the uh, steady state solutions. So, to conclude this part, I would say, I will, uh, uh, pose a couple of uh, uh, open questions for time fraction of phase field equations. So whether the energy dissipation law uh, true, even in the continuous level. In the continuous level, this is uh, uh, not known yet. And how to design high order energy stable numerical methods. For now, we only have a first order. For the high order, also in time and in space, this is uh, quite a challenge. And a rigorous proof of the minus alpha over three uh, power law. I think this is also interesting. And uh, physically, this seems with uh, uh, quite many uh, numerical experiments, this seems a uh, 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 correct result. Okay, I have a few minutes. Uh, uh, I will just briefly mention the UQ for phase field models. So Professor Shi Jing already gave a, a very good background about the UQ, so I will not repeat this. So I just want to mention that if, uh, even uh, give you some ideas, this is ongoing project we are doing for this Alan Kahn or phase field problems. So uh, for Alan Kahn, for example, uh, naturally you'll see we have uh, initially, we initial data, we have some kind of randomness. So we have some kind of uh, uncertainties there. And then we also, as a possible to have uh, with uh, the uh, coefficient, uh, 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 diffusion coefficient, we may have some kind of uh, uncertainties. Uh, the, so uh, in this case, they could be uh, input random vector and uh, with also the dimension D, and then we, we also, uh, for, for we, this is a kind of uh, independence, you know, due to the, we, we assume this is kind of independent uh, uh, parameters in each direction. So uh, normally we are interested in uh, mean and variance for uh, if we have this kind of uh, uh, randomness there, so we want to uh, describe uh, uh, you know, the effect of this uh, kind of uncertainties. So one thing is the free energy for Alan Kahn. So 
uh, one straightforward. It's like uh, you know we talk about the fractional uh, uh, space fractional. You know we normally talk about we have the straightforward uh, definition. You know like we work on the previous uh, 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 without uncertainty. We have this energy definition. Then we have the mean of this. So we end up with. Uh, uh, this definition, so easily you can show that this uh, 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 this definition, uh, so energy dissipation is true. So, uh, so, so just remember, I mentioned the energy dissipation. You know, this is possibly the only uh, guiding uh, principle for stability. So, this is the loneliness stability. So, this is something we want to uh, continue to uh, to uh, to, uh, to have. So, another interesting problem is to invest in the following uh, free energy. So. Uh, so basically, we want to we, we have a u with uh, with the this is uh, uh, the mean of a velocity, and then instead of uh, we we have exactly the same same, same uh, uh, form of the energy, we have something like this. However, this u now is the mean of this velocity. So having this, you know, numerically, this seems a very interesting uh, definition of this uh, uh, the energy. Uh, it's, it's very difficult, I would say, to obtain, uh, you know, some kind of a theoretical analysis. But numerically, this is also uh, 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 with the UQ. This is also uh, uh, decreasing fractional uh, in time. Okay, so uh, we also did something uh, with, uh, with the stochastic collocation methods. So the, the collocation, spectral collocation, you know, if you have the, some kind of a spectral background, it's very, very similar. Like we have a uniform density with a Legendre Gaussian points, a samples, normal distribution with a Hermit Gaussian, you know, this kind of calculations. So if, I do the, uh, if we do the stochastic collocation, if we don't care about the uh, dimension problems, so then this is will be straightforward. You know, then we can see we have the, we have the tensor product, we have Lagrange, uh, polynomial, then we can prove this everything is correct. Uh, however, so the one thing for our uh, uh, study is uh, if we don't do this exact tensor product, we have, uh, uh, say, a few points uh, in some directions, uh, less points in certain directions, it's not exactly tensor. So what happened? So, so ideally, you know, we may have like uh, 20 points in one direction, three points in uh, 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 in another direction, so, so theoretically, uh, even numerically, this will be uh, interesting. So, so, so that means we talk about uh, the sparse grid, because otherwise, uh, if we use a tensor, we may end up with a huge number of samples. So this is certainly not good. So, so we, uh, but then the idea is the sparse grid for this collocation, uh, for this Alan Khan, we, we, we end up with a negative weight sometimes. So the energy stability may feel and then we want to see, like a previous P adaptivity, so we, we want to see if I have a negative weights only for a few places. Still, we want to have a generally, we, we have something good. So uh, I think my time is up. So I want to give you a conclusions. The, uh, the first, uh, the energy law is a key feature for phase field uh, models. If you, even we have a fractional, non-local models, we have the UQ models, we always want to have something to make sure I have stability. If you have a coherer, you have a biharmonic operators, so other uh, uh, st stability principles uh, seem not available, but the energy law seems uh, a very good uh, feature. And energy stable numerical methods have been well studied, and also how can we extend this to long local models, to UQ problems. And, uh, uh, and the time fractional phase field models, we have new challenges, uh, quite some many, uh, quite some open problems. UQ study for phase field models, again, we have uh, new challenges and uh, many open uh, uh, questions. So uh, I would like to thank my collaborators of this talk. Zhonghua uh, is here, and also we have, uh, uh, I'm, I didn't mention Alex. Alex Koganov is now our faculty member. We have done some problems relevant to the splitting method. And we also have uh, uh, Hai Yu and Tao Zhou is a Chinese Academy of Science. Chuan Ji Xi is uh, uh, in Xiamen University. So, okay, thank you very much. I'll finish here. Thank you, thank you, thank you.